Good morning and happy Easter. It's Chris Kemshill here, uh, pastor of Linton Free Church. I'm here in church uh, this this uh, morning, this Easter morning. And this is a pre-recording of uh, my Easter sermon. Uh, so if you missed it live, uh, you can watch it at a later date. You might want to watch it again uh, after watching it live. Who knows? Uh, but I'm here in, in church. And just to show you, uh, this is an empty church. There is no one here with me. Uh, no one up in the balcony. And so I'm just going to put this here. Uh, there's a reason which I'll share with you in, in a moment why I'm here in church this morning. I have been recording my uh, services, uh, sermons, uh, messages at home. Uh, but today, Easter morning, I've decided to come into church. I'm standing at a different angle to what I would normally be standing at. That, that, that's because of the sun coming through one of the windows. But anyway, I'm just going to share with you my message, uh, Easter morning message. If you can, turn with me in your Bibles to Luke chapter 24, uh, verse uh, 1 through to 8. It says this, on the first day of the week, very early in the morning, the women took the spices they had prepared and went to the tomb. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb. But when they entered, they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. While they were wondering about this, suddenly two men in clothes that gleamed like lightning stood beside them. In their fright, the women bowed down with their faces to the ground. But the men said to them, why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here. He has risen. Remember how he, to he told you while he was still with you in Galilee. The son of man must be delivered over to the hands of sinners, be crucified and on the third day be raised again. Then they remembered his words. Now, if someone had told me a couple of months ago that I would be preaching on Easter morning to an empty congregation, I wouldn't have believed them and I would have thought that what they're saying was crazy. But these are the times we are in. And the reason why I wanted to come to church this morning was uh, to say that like the church is empty. Like the pews are empty this Easter morning, the, the church, the church building, like that is empty, so is the tomb. So is the tomb. He is alive. Jesus is alive. He is living. He is victorious. He has conquered death. The enemy is defeated. Now these women were surprised when they ent entered the empty tomb, even though Jesus had already told them that this would happen. And this got me thinking, and I, I dipped into a, a message that I shared either last Easter or the Easter before, but I've completely changed that into a new message. But this empty tomb experience got me thinking, and... It got me thinking that, you know, God often does the unexpected. He is a God of surprises. Luke, my son, he often surprises me. He often hides behind the corner or in a cupboard when I go to say night. And he jumps out at me. He surprises me. He does the unexpected. And sometimes I jump out of my skin. Now, that's not what God does, but he is the God of surprises. He is the God of the unexpected. We see that throughout Scripture. Throughout the Old Testament, we see how God does the unexpected. He appears as a burning bush. He causes the sea to part. He causes the walls of a city uh, to fall down because of marching men. I can't imagine that morning uh, Moses woke up and thought, well, I I'm going to meet with God today through the form of a burning bush. God does the unexpected. He's a God of surprises. He can do anything. 
although he uh, is the great creator of the heavens and earth and can do anything, even that's, though that's the case, he wasn't born into luxury like you would expect of a king. Throughout his life, he did the unexpected. He turned water into wine. He hung out with tax collectors and prostitutes. He slept through storms. He walked on water. It could go on and on. He healed the blind using mud and spit. And then this king, at the end of his time on earth, he took a ride on a borrowed donkey into a city where his assassins were waiting. And he did that without any security guards. He didn't fight back when he was being persecuted. He was willing to die so that the people killing him could live. Jesus was willing to die so that the people killing him could live. And then we see from our reading, he conquers death. And this is what we celebrate on Easter. Jesus' victory over death. And it's for us. He died for each and every one of us. If you can, please turn with me to John chapter 20. I'm going to read verse 19, 20 and 21. And this is the story of when Jesus appears to his disciples after his resurrection. It says this, on the evening of that first day of, day of the week, <coughs> when the disciples were together, with the doors locked for fear of the Jewish leaders, Jesus came and stood among them and said, peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples were overjoyed when they saw the Lord. Again, Jesus said, peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, I am sending you. I absolutely love this story, this, this uh, passage of scripture. Jesus' followers were in a room. They were grieving uh, for Jesus. And they were in fear that the Jews would be after them next. So the doors were locked. There was no way in. Nobody was getting near them without a fight. But suddenly, out of nowhere, without opening any doors or windows, Jesus appeared and stood with them. Just imagine being there. Just imagine that. I often think when I, when I uh, read scripture, I often think, I wish I was there for that. I really wish I experienced that. I encountered that. This, I was thinking, this is the most ultimate boo ever. And Jesus booed his disciples by saying, peace be with you. They needed his peace anyway, even more so now. This Easter, I want us to think uh, about a few points. I want us to consider three things that I'm going to close with now. One, don't limit our God. Our God is full of surprises. I think we often set out in our minds how God is going to do something, how he's going to work in a situation, how he's going to speak to his, how, how he's going to reveal himself, how he's going to heal, how he's going to meet that need, how he's going to use us. God often, though, does the unexpected. Let's not limit God to our own understanding. The second thing, so don't limit God, also believe for the impossible in these times believe for the impossible nothing is impossible for God Ephesians 3 verse 20 tells us that God is able to do immeasurably more than we can ask or imagine according to his power that is at work within us what are we prepared to do uh, to step out in faith, believe in God to do in the next days and weeks. Someone said, this is how you spell faith, R-I-S-K, risk. What are we prepared to step out in faith for 
in believing uh, for God to do. And the third and final point, we don't, we don't limit God, we believe the impossible and we are ready to be sent. Be ready to be sent. After Jesus appeared to his disciples, after his resurrection, he had a simple message for them. Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, I am sending you. Where is it? Where is it that Jesus is sending you? Let me pray with you. Almighty God, throughout history, you have done the unexpected. You have revealed yourself in the most amazing ways. None more than becoming a sacrifice for us and dying on a cross. Only to conquer death and rise victoriously. And today we celebrate your victory. Help us not to limit you and increase our faith so that we might believe you will do immeasurably more that we can ask or imagine according to your power that is at work within us. Lord, we commit ourselves to being ready for wherever you want to send us. We praise you for this day of victory. Amen. God bless you guys. Happy Easter. Enjoy this victorious day and keep safe. God bless you.